Mix Mix. My name is Aaron. My name is Patricia. And this is uh, episode 30A, I guess. Uh, really what we've been doing with the Pix Minis, uh, we've not really been counting them as episodes, if you will. Like, uh, they've just been kind of like things been in between Pix Mix episodes. So, uh, but uh, nevertheless, we are going to be covering Pix Minis again in this one. And uh, this time, we're going to be doing the top five best and top five worst of the latest 25 Pix Minis that we have seen. So, um, f uh, to catch up everybody who's not been familiar with this, so what we do is, is that, so we put out a poll uh, for everybody to vote in, and so uh, right now, as of this podcast, the polls are closed, so you can't vote in them anymore. But uh, what happens is that so the uh, 25 um, picks minis that uh, we have here, we basically are going to rate them from uh, the top five best uh, that are on that uh, you guys have given, and uh, we're going to give our scores in as well. And uh, also, we're going to give you the top five worst ones, and also one of them is also I I eligible for a participation award. So that's basically how yes. we've been doing this. So, all right then. So, uh, baby, you ready to uh, go through the top five best and top five worst picks minis? I am so excited and so curious about what is going to be the result. So let's get to it. Cool. Okay then. So uh, we are going to start off with the top five worst uh, pick, um, Pixar shorts. Uh, so um, this is uh, how they get rated. So we give a rating out of uh, ten out of ten, and we give uh, also, I also give a rating of ten out of ten, and then also um, you guys come in with your score, and then with that we basically use that as the tiebreaker in case we like you know come up with the same score and then basically that gets processed through. So um, we are going to start off with number five in the top worst uh, Pix minis of the, the next 25 uh, Pixar shorts. Uh, number five in this list uh, got an average score of uh, seven out of ten from me and Patricia, and now has a final score of seven out of ten. It is 22 versus Earth. Okay, so this was the short that aired on Disney Plus when Soul came out. Um, I take it that this would have probably been in one of the DVD extras. So out of the shorts that came out around 2020 and 2021, because of COVID, they weren't able to have the theaters open. So we had two shorts. We had um, 22 Versus Earth and Chow Alberto. And I guess for some people, they felt that 22 Versus Earth just wasn't up to snuff with the other Pixar shorts. Um, in my opinion, I thought it was a decent short. Like we said, we gave it a 7 out of 10. But I guess when you compare the other Pixar shorts that are on this list, I guess it's um, not up to snuff, but I still think it was pretty okay. By the way, um, this actually might be interesting here because uh, I mean, in the last like couple of times we've done these, they you know the scores have like dipped down into like you know twos, threes, things like that. This doesn't go under six. By the way, so yeah, like th that, they... that's, that's crazy to think. Maybe because I mean these are Pixar shorts, and the the Pixar shorts that we've covered throughout this part have been stellar. There hasn't been, like, a stinker. I mean, sure, maybe there was one or two, but for the most part, they've been amazing. I, I think the... the I guess maybe it is a bit kind of unfair to say, like, they're, these are the top five worst. Maybe they're, like, they're, they're the top mediocre, maybe, uh, Pixar shorts, maybe? But anyway, we're going to count them as worst, so uh, we're just going to sure. go with it. So, anyway, yeah. 22 versus Earth is the fifth worst uh, in this group, and uh, I can sort of see why, like, it's... Um, you know, it doesn't really stand out from, like, all the other uh, Pixar shorts, and Dare I say, if we actually put them up against the entire lot, I think it probably would have been more worse for wear, I guess. But mind you, I think it probably would yeah. have been better than some of the other, you know, shockers that we've had. I mean, the but. only way you can watch this is either on the uh, Disney Plus or maybe if it's released on Soul DVD or Blu-ray. This is not included in, like, the Pixar Volume 3 shorts. So, yeah, I think that for a lot of people, it's just an additional thing. Like, you could easily do without it because we already know the backstory of 22. We already know that 22... 22 had gone through multiple guardians and she basically rejected them all and she was trying to do the same thing with all of the other souls in which she was trying to prevent them from going down into earth so it's not like say um lamp life or the legend of mordu in which it actually added in some things that were really necessary for the plot especially legend of mordu in which like Unless you've seen the short, you really don't know much about Mordu and his backstory. So this one is just an additional thing. I would put it along the lines maybe of, um, you know, the various Pixar shorts that we have seen, like um, 
you know, the upshort that we talked about where it focused on the um, the people who um, worked on the nursing home. Although I think that we rated it just a little bit lower because A, it was an animatic and B, it didn't have the voice actors. So we rate that even lower due to the limitations of that and probably because it was just like an animatic. So basically... It's that, except that it has the same animation style and the same voice actors as the movie. So I guess we'll put it into that account. Okay. Right. Um, the fourth worst uh, Pixar short in this list. Um, it had an average score uh, between me and Patricia of 7.75 out of 10. It now has an average score of 6.975 out of 10. It is wow. Lava. Oh, God. What? Why do you hate it? Seriously, uh, why do you hate this short? It's a fun short. I actually like this. I also like the soundtracks to this short as well. Like, it's one of my, it was one of my favorites, uh, you know, musical numbers, I think, out of Pixar. Seriously, people, I know that everybody who's anybody has claimed that this short was absolute garbage and it was the worst Pixar short of all time. I like to know legitimately... Why? I don't understand why. I like it. It just it's uh, I like it. Like okay, it's it is it is kind of cheesy in a way. Like uh, you know, like the whole love story and things like that. And like you know, it's volcanoes. I made jokes about it as well. So like uh, you know, yeah, but, yeah uh, the, the volcano had a face. That was literally the first thing you said when we watched it. Exactly. Together. Yeah. And so um, and I've seen lava before. So like it was. Um, I like lava. So like it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the problem with it? And what it because oh, it's not as emotional compared to the other Pixar shorts, or not as. Fun. Funny? Ah. Mm, maybe they were uh, unhappy because it wasn't like uh, you know the island out of the Incredibles something like that. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I this one I definitely do not agree with. Yeah, I don't so, agree with this yeah. either. So I do apologize. I, I, sorry, guys, right. but no, we're not. Yeah, I'm with sorry. This one. I guess maybe it's one of those oh unpopular opinions about Pixar, and Lava is not that bad. People, give it another shot and remove what you expect to see in a Pixar short out of it, saying like, oh, you know, Pixar movies are supposed to be this and this and that. Well, apparently, according to some people, Pixar shorts are supposed to be this and this and that. They can be varied, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one, in the third uh, worst Pixar short in this list, uh, is uh, got an average score of six out of ten. Uh, now it has an average score of 6.65 out of 10. It's Party Central. Okay, yeah. So we had our issues with Monsters University. We talked about this in the Pix Mix episode, so go listen to that. But I would say that as an additional thing that was featured of Mike and Sully throwing this party, it was cool, yes, but... If you were to remove it, then nothing really much would have happened. Again, this is going to the same complaint that we have with 22 versus Earth. It's really nice that we got to see some additional things with the characters, and it was nice that they were able to keep the animation style and the voice actors, but there's, it's not really that necessary. Yeah, I mean, uh, in regards to Party Central, like, I like the premise of, like, uh, hey, we're going to use the doors and we're going to basically have, like, you know, a massive party and get everyone out of, like, the other, uh, you know, party and move them into our one. But the the one thing that holds it back, I think, is, like, the, the talk between, like, uh, the the couple that are, like, you know, in, in between all of this. And I think it needed a bit more, be, I would like it they kind of built it more, like, you know, oh, it's, like, you know, the neighbors again. Oh, it's, like, it's something going on outside. And then they slowly start to make their way towards the fact that they might be something in the closet you know yeah well it's going straight to the closet you know i just think mm -hmm. it's just a i don't know they, they need to find some more explanations just to make it a bit more funnier but uh obviously sure. they didn't do that and uh, i guess a lot of people agreed and here we go it's our third worst uh short out of this list yeah okay yeah it, it's not that it's bad it's just that i mean it's not like mike's new car in which yes we did kind of know about that mike was obsessed with this car and that he needed to you know, save on driving it because we're running on a low energy source. But then you got to see at the end, at the end credits, if you watch it on VHS or if you have the DVD extras, then you can be able to see, okay, Mike has a different car and he's able to show off the cool things to it. But yeah, I mean, the premise of it is very basic. It's just Mike showing Sully his new car, but it was funny. And here again, like it was able to bring out more information about what they were doing as a sorority so that they could be able to throw this cool party that was pretty neat but uh wasn't as i mean it was funny in some parts of it and i would say that um it was able to maybe build some of the atmosphere of the university but for the most part i could have done well without it yeah okay 
Um, the second worst in this list. Um, this got an average score of 7.5 out of 10 from me and Patricia. It now has a final score of 6.55 out of 10. It's Lou. Lou? Really? I'm really surprised at this. I actually liked Lou. And, uh, me too. You know, I guess some people probably looked at it and, like, say, oh, this is just, like, you know, uh, uh, a rip-off of, like, you know, another Pixar thing, which kind of like, skips my mind for whatever reason. Like, it's just I like, guess maybe they felt like, oh, this is just, like, Toy Story. This is, like, Toy Story. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, I don't know why that kind of fell out of my head, but, uh, um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'll... it's like, in instead of Sid, we have Lou, and instead of toys, we have uh, various other objects, and instead of Skid being scared out of his mind, we have Lou, who is being bribed, saying, I'm going to hold on to this. You better give everybody else's stuff back. So, yeah, I guess maybe it's not original, but I wouldn't call it terrible. I actually would like to have seen, this could actually have been the premise of a movie. Like, you know, it didn't yeah, necessarily, sure. necessarily even be, it needs to be a short. Like, you know, like, it was just, it was... Uh, I mean, sure, but, it yeah. would have been a little bit derivative from Toy Story, but still, I thought it would have been really interesting to see more about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm really surprised by this. Like, I mean, the, the audience clearly disagreed with us. Like, you know, we thought this was actually a really good show, but everyone else doesn't think so. So Well, um, I mean, th then again, we liked Lava, and apparently everybody on the internet calls it garbage, so what do we know? We okay. Right, okay, so let's get this out of the way. This is the worst of the um, of the ones that we've seen so far in like this this uh, uh, series of Pix Minis. Uh, this got an average score of 4.5 out of 10. <laughs> uh, this now has a final score of 6.35 out of 10. It's Radiator Springs 500 and a half. Are you, come on, this is like the most predictable thing ever. Of course a car short was going to make it into number one. Yeah, it was. And, uh, but mind you, I think, uh, funny enough, like uh, I think that the, the listeners actually were a bit more forgiving, I think, of this uh, of this short than some of the other yeah, cars. We, 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 we think that this is definitely the best of the car short. Now, granted, we have not seen Miss Fritter's Racing School because that was not included on Disney+, and Aaron does not own season, um, Volume 3 of the Pixar shorts on DVD. So we were not able to see that, but yeah, I would say that out of the three car shorts that we did see, this was actually okay. But still, it's cars. What do you expect? Okay. And the dishonorable mentions on uh, this uh, list include Lamp Life and Shell Alberto. All right. Well, two shorts that came out roughly around the same time and two shorts that focused on what the side characters were doing. So we got to know about Bo Peep during the time in which she was um, given to the other family at Toy Story 4. And we got to find out what Alberto was doing with Massimo after Luca left off with Julia to school. So, yeah, pretty similar, I would say. Yeah. Okay, I mean, like, in regards to, like, these two, I mean, like, they're not, like, close to, like, I mean, the, the f f number five is obviously a seven, but uh, these are, like, 7.2 and 7.5 out of 10. So, like, you know, they weren't, like, you know, not too near to basically being in the list, but they were close. I guess. Okay, so, um, the Participation Award. Um, this uh, basically goes to a, um, a short that uh, got an average score of 7.5 out of 10, it now has an average score of 7.65 out of 10. It's Partysaurus Rex. Yeah, and um, Aaron and I are still deciding on which of the Toy Story tunes were the best, but I would say that Partysaurus Rex was pretty good, considering that we got to see a side of Rex we'd never seen before. Exactly, yeah. That's the reason I like this Toy Story short, because it's a side, yeah, it's, it, it expands more into uh, Rex's character. Like, you know, he's uh, not as boring as, like, you know, all the other toys that seems to be. Like, all the bath toys think he's, like, the best thing ever. You know, and no, no, yeah, exactly. And all yeah, the pool they, they toys call outside, probably. Rex. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think that it was able to give a side of Rex that was kind of needed when you know he was shown as cowardly and he was shown as like the one who was very insecure about everything. So having him having the spotlight of basically being like the fun character who got to fill up the bathtub and got to put the bath um, soap in and being able to. Um, you know, have fun with all the other toys. It was actually pretty nice to see that. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to go into the top five uh, of the uh, this generation of, uh, well, this series of Pigs Minis that we've seen. So, uh, baby, are you ready for this? Yes, okay. I am ready. Right. The fifth best uh, Pixar short in this series uh, has an average score of 
8.75, oh, actually, no, eight, 8 out of 10. So, yeah, 8 out of 10 uh, is the average score of this. It now has a final score, thanks to all you listeners, of 8.3 out of 10. It's Auntie Edna. Yeah, so this was actually, again, very similar to what we talked about with Lamp Life and 22 versus Earth and um, Ciao Alberto and Party Central, in which it takes place around the time of the movie, where we got to find out, okay, we know that Edna was watching over Jack-Jack while Mr. Incredible was getting some sleep because he was going through deprivation with Jack-Jack uh, tra- um, teleporting here and there and turning into that monster whenever he wants cookies so we got to see what edna was doing and we got to learn that edna was watching over him taking some notes about all of his powers putting together a suit for him and yeah it was very enjoyable and getting to see edna having more screen time was actually pretty good yeah i guess um a question would be is that is it better than jack jack attack I think, uh, you know... Um, that's uh, kind of hard to say because what made Jack-Jack Attack so funny was seeing the babysitter's reaction to all of the transformations of um, Jack-Jack's powers and then eventually Syndrome coming in and taking over, watching over him, saying that he's the sitter and that whole joke about, like, what does the S stand for? And so having Edna around, I think it's a little bit similar in terms of, like, a Jack-Jack um, short in which you're like, okay, we have somebody who's watching over Jack-Jack. The difference is, is that Edna is fascinated with Jack-Jack's abilities, not frightened by it. Yeah, and I guess, uh, yeah, that's the fun thing I think about uh, uh, Auntie Edna, I think, is that it actually shows another side of Edna, I think, that we don't normally see. So, like, yeah, yeah you know. because Edna is always like the very tight knit person who's always caring about the superheroes' looks and always concerned about, you know, wanting to catch up with them and how they look and all the techniques and all the gadgets that they have and no capes. So, having a motherly side of Edna showcase in this short was actually pretty different and surprisingly very sweet. Yeah, and actually, and also, it's uh, keep this in mind like uh, a lot of like superheroes, even though like they're super strong, they're afraid of Edna's presence. So like uh, to yes, see the, yeah to see the other side of her is actually quite unique. So yes, absolutely. It, it's the reason why we like Partysaurus Rex because we got to see a different side of Edna that we've never seen before. So it was actually really nice to see. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, number four in the in this list of the best uh, Pix, Pixar shorts uh, of this series uh, had an average score of eight point seven five out of ten. It now has a final score of 8.475 out of 10. It is Sanjay Super Team. Wow, I'm glad that this made it onto the list because, as I said before, this short is incredibly underrated. And the reason why was because it was paired up with The Good Dinosaur, which nobody watched. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that people actually do appreciate what this short was able to showcase is actually really awesome. Yeah, I like this short as well. Like it, I like the, the the style that it has with it. Like it's uh, you know the art style is incredible, and uh, the idea that uh, you know it presents these uh, these you know these gods as like you know superheroes like uh, for these kids. Like he has like a, a different perception that. Like his father has, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it gives them a chance to like kind of like bond at the very end of the shot. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, and it's um, one of the. I think it's probably as of right now one of the very few shorts that is based off of a true story. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another unique factor to it as well. Dare I say maybe it should have been a bit higher on the list, but uh, hey, we're still going to go for the other three. So yeah. Yeah, but I'm do. I am glad that it did get some recognition for being one of the top five best. Yeah. Okay, um, we are going to go to number three in this list. Uh, so, uh, number three in this list got an average score of 9 out of 10. Uh, it now has a final score of 8.5 out of 10. It's Riley's first date. Yeah, so once again, great to see the emotions again and being able to have more focus on the parents where we got to see their reactions to this guy that just so happens to walk in and saying that he wants to see Riley. So uh, the creativity was awesome. I think out of all the shorts that we've seen in this batch that is based off of a movie, I think this is the best one. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, like I like the dynamic between like you know the 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 boy and like the uh, you know the the the, you know, the dad character in this, and uh, you know like and also like the the mother in this is hilarious as well. Like you know just like you know having to go like through these uh, you know uh, you know we're trying to be like new age and things like that, and like he just goes down really yeah, badly yeah, yeah. with the uh, with uh, with disgust. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that, that, I, I think all that, that was really also, good. Also, I think that also another thing that makes it really great is that. Um, It actually deals a lot with uh, twists and turns in which, like, you think it's about one thing, but it's actually about another thing. But 
at the end of it, it's like, oh, he's just a friend. We're just going to go out and hang out with some friends. But the dad was perfect, perfectly fine with him because they just so happened to like rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, there's a lot of ACDC in this, so I really like that. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, f- exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, one of the very few reasons why you actually enjoyed watching Trolls World Tour. <laughs> Number two in this list has got an average score of nine out of ten. It now has a final score of eight point nine out of ten. It's Piper. Okay, yeah. So Piper is a wonderful short. I mean, the animation of it is gorgeous. The story is actually really nice, where you got to see Piper conquering her fears of going over to the ocean to find food after it's old enough so it can be able to find it on its own. So wonderfully done. It's uh, As we mentioned in the podcast, the first time in 15 years that... Uh, Pixar was able to win an Oscar for a short. The last time that this happened uh, was back in 2001 with For the Birds. Wow. (laughs) I guess if you want to do a Pixar short and you want to win an Oscar, you have to focus it on birds, apparently. (laughs) Anyway, so, yes, it's wonderfully done. Uh, The details of it is fantastic, and the music's great, and the story's good. So it all boils down to a modern Pixar classic. Yeah. Don't be wrong. Like, Sunday Super Team, like, has its, like, unique art style. But Piper just, like, it goes for, like, hyper-realism. It really does. Like, Yeah, just, I yeah. would say that that's a difference between the two. It's, like, Sanjay Super Team is very colorful and it's very stylized. And it does keep into the traditions of Indian culture. While Piper is much more realistic in terms of, like, the details with the sand and the water and the feathers on the bird and the the shininess of the shells of the crabs. So, yeah, it, it definitely goes into that direction, and it succeeds wonderfully. Mm-hmm. Right. Before we go to number one, um, we're going to look at the honorable mentions. And so the honorable mentions are The Legend of Mordu and Bao. I'm glad it didn't, because I know that people, when they saw it, they were just so polarized with it and just saying, what the hell I just watched. So I'm glad it didn't end up the same way as Lava did, in which it would have been a short that we had to defend. But I'm glad that it was in the honorable mentions of the good Pixar shorts, because I think that people are starting to die away from the unnecessary hate that it got. So Do do you know what I think probably happened? Like, maybe Turning Red's happened, and maybe that's probably made people think about differently about Bao. I don't know. Mm. Maybe. Possibly, yeah. And also, I think that um, the other short... What was the other short again? Uh, the other short uh, was um, The Legend of Mordu. Okay, The Legend of Mordu. Okay, like I said earlier, this was a short that was needed. Absolutely, desperately needed. Because if you watch Brave, you would hear about Mordu, but you didn't know really anything about him other than just the small backstory that Merida's mother gave about, like, the four kingdoms and the four brothers, and they were divided and blah, 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 blah. But again, due to the massive behind-the-scenes issues, Brenda Chapman wasn't able to flesh it out the way that she wanted to. So we had to have this short in order for us to actually know a lot about the villain, which sucks, by the way, because it should have been in the movie. Yeah, In in my opinion, the the Mordu story should have been the first movie. And then after that, you should have done Brave, in my opinion. Yeah, like a prequel series almost. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, that would have made more sense if you were going to tell this story. Yeah, I think that would have made a lot more sense. Like, if we actually got a buildup of, you know, the four kingdoms, and then we got to see the four brothers, and then Mordu wanted more power, and then at the end of the movie, he turns into the bear. And then we go over to Brave, in which we actually do know about it, and then finally she defeats Mordu, and then the three kingdoms unite. So, yeah, I do definitely agree. I mean, I guess they're yeah, trying I mean, to the four brothers movie of- would have been a massive departure from, like, what uh, Pixar had done previously, so it would have stood out on its own. Like, exactly, you know, yeah. yeah. And I think that Game of Thrones is also doing something similar in which they're actually having this uh, prequel series on HBO in which they're focusing on 200 years before the events of the Game of Thrones TV series that we know of. So, yeah, I think that uh, if they want to go back to Brave, which I doubt at this point, they could be able to do a prequel series focusing on the brothers. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, I mean, I could probably see Disney, you know, just because, you know, Merida now is a Disney princess, maybe they probably will go back to it, like, on their own terms, but Pixar, I don't think so. Like, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty big shock to hear about Inside Out 2, let alone hear about, like, anything, you know, for Yeah, brave. yeah, exactly, so, yeah. you know, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay. 
Right, everybody, we've uh, stalled long enough, I think. Uh, I think people already already know what uh, the number one is going to be, but uh, we'll tell you anyway. This what, this uh, short had an average score of 8.75 out of 10. It now has an, uh, a final score of 8.9 out of 10. It's the Blue Umbrella. Yeah, well... I think that the short was really, really well done. Uh, I really like the the the, the um, atmosphere that it was able to build up to it. The rain and seeing the love story between the blue umbrella and the red umbrella. I thought it was really, really cute, and I thought that um, the homages to One Hundred and One Dalmatians was actually really, really nice. Would I have put it on number one? Probably not. I thought Piper would have probably been my number one out of the shorts that we talked about this summer. But yeah, it was still pretty good, though. Yeah, I mean, like uh, doing. Get me wrong, like uh, that's the reason why I almost said it was a tie because uh, uh, Piper actually had 8.9 out of 10, and the only reason the Brill Umbrella won is because it had like a 0.75, like 0.075 on it. That's literally how close it, Piper was to be actually beating the Blue Umbrella. So wow. uh, yeah, it's very, very close. I think if we had, I think I was nearly looking at like probably doing a tiebreaker for it, but uh, no, there's um, they, you can just have some extra digits on there, and basically that makes yeah, the yeah. Umbrella, the, uh, the, the but top still, top. I, mean, I thought it was a pretty good choice. I thought that the blue umbrella is still really well done, is just as detailed as Piper, except a little bit more, obviously, because it came out a few years earlier than Piper, but still, um, excellent shorts. Um, I think that it was a great. Um, way to pair it up with the movie that it did pair up with, which I um, think that, you know, uh, was just a shame that Piper didn't win. But again, it's still a pretty good choice. Yep, yeah, and I agree. Like, Blue Umbrella, I think, is it's a fantastic shot. I urge anyone to go out and see it. Like, it's got yeah. a great story. It's got great uh, sound. It's uh, got great music. It's uh, got, you know, uh, great characters in it as well, even though they don't speak, which, uh, by the way, is uh, another str strength, I think, to play to this. Like, you know, you can use uh, all the elements around you to tell a story. You don't have to, like, have any speaking words or anything like that. That's what, uh, that seems to be, like, some of the best picks on, you know, uh, shorts that I can see. Like, you know, like Red Stream, for example, and, like, uh, you know, some of the other classic ones that we looked at previously. Obviously. I think uh, the ones yeah, that exactly. seem to like the ones that don't seem to like make it also Piper too. I mean, like that came second, so like yeah, uh, they, exactly. Yeah. I would say the, the for the most part, with the exception of Lava, there's no talking. It's just the dialogue heavy, um, you know, Pixar movies that are the ones that have the shorts. But for the most part, they're all silent, but they're able to play with it with the animation and with the character movements. Mm -hmm. But I think Blue Umbrella does it really, really well. So, um, yeah, I mean, even though I personally would have had Piper as number one, I'm not upset that Blue Umbrella took it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, that was our top five best and top five worst uh, of this uh, series of Pix Minis. We will look at more minis in the future. But uh, until then, I guess we are going to be uh, making our way over to the next Pixar film, which I believe is going to be uh, Elemental. Elemental. Yeah, there we go. Yes. So Elemental yeah, so will be on next. Yeah, so we'll be doing next. Elemental, and then um, who knows? Maybe maybe leading up to either Elemental or uh, leading up to I don't know, maybe um, Inside Out Two. Then we'll t cover the other Pixar shorts, which the next time we will, we'll talk about the Spark Shorts series. So I'm really lo looking forward to that one. I'm looking forward to that too. But until then, everybody, take care and bye bye for now. See you later.